Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Beach closures due to algae blooms have become an unfortunate and common occurrence this summer. In the simplest terms, these blooms require a few ingredients, sunlight, warm temperatures and nutrients. Mix these together in the right conditions and boom, you've got algae blooms. The two nutrients that cause the biggest challenge are nitrogen and phosphorus. When these nutrients run off from farm fields and residential areas, they impair and endanger waterways. These impaired waterways are subject to a water quality standard known as the Total Maximum Daily Load, or TMDL. Here's a short video produced by the Lake Champlain Basin Program to explain how the phosphorus load has a big impact on the health of the lake. A total maximum daily load, or TMDL, is a diet plan that limits the amount of a pollutant that can go into a water body and identifies pollution reductions needed. To address issues with cyanobacteria, or blue-green algae, the EPA has set a TMDL for phosphorus in Lake Champlain. Because conditions in and around the lake vary greatly, different parts of the lake have different phosphorus limits. Each segment has different goals with specific actions to reduce phosphorus. To talk TMDL, I'm joined by Chris Stepanak. She is the UVM Extension Assistant Professor of Watershed Science Policy and Education at the Rubenstein School of Environment and Natural Resources. She also leads the Lake Champlain Sea Grant Extension Program here in Vermont. Welcome so much, Chris. Thanks for having me, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, so uh, we saw in the, in the video that there are different areas of the lake that have different goals when it comes to the TMDL. Why is that? Yeah, it has to do both with the size of the watershed that drains to that part of Lake Champlain, as well as the land uses and the geology in those watersheds. So, for example, we have some watersheds that are really steep coming out of the Green Mountains mm. and they're very forested and those watersheds will be more likely to have erosion, which is how phosphorus moves attached to soil particles from, say, a forestry practice or from stream bank erosion. And then we have other watersheds that are agricultural and the, those watersheds would have more likely uh, runoff from an agricultural field and maybe those are flatter and lower gradient so they would experience um, flooding and runoff differently and then we also have urban and suburban watersheds where we would expect uh, a different kind of runoff coming from our cities or our yards and so each of those are going to have impacts on how much phosphorus is coming off of the land and reaching Lake Champlain. So they have their own goals. Wow, that's amazing. And, and actually you've been working for at least a decade with groups of citizen scientists to monitor what's happening in the lake, um, how, you know, not only measuring things, but, but looking at it. Um, so how do you work with those groups to, to see how things are, how the lake acts differently? Yeah, great question. Th this is actually a really neat story from the Lake Champlain total maximum daily load is that citizens and community members were able to collect thousands of data points about the water clarity and the phosphorus levels. And they also reported on their opinions about the aesthetics of the lake. And then scientists at the state took those data and they were able to come up with a um, assessment of when phosphorus is at a certain concentration this is what people think about the lake and how it impacts their use and their love and their mm. excitement and enjoyment of, of being with the lake. So it actually influenced what we have for the TMDL goals for each section of the water body uh, because community members got involved and collected all this data. So the citizen and so scientists are important. And is, is Lake Champlain unique in, in the challenges it's facing right now? Sadly, it's not. Uh, Non-point source pollution, that is pollution that comes from sources, from diffuse sources across the landscape, is the number one kind of water quality pollution in the nation right now. Uh, back in the 1970s, we, before we had wastewater treatment plants, point sources of pollution uh, were our most common kind of pollution. So those are things coming out of pipes. Now those things are all regulated and we are addressing well what's happening from where it's more complicated to figure out where is this pollution coming from and it's coming from a lot of places so lake champlain is like it's a uh, brethren of lakes across the nation where they are facing cyanobacteria blooms and other kinds of water quality issues as a result of nutrients and other uh, pollutants that wash off the land sure yeah the great lakes are also having uh, some some really tough problems as well. So what has happened for a waterway to receive a TMDL 
uh, designation? Good question. So because of the Clean Water Act, all states and federally recognized tribes are required to monitor all of the surface waters in the state and then assess them for if they are impaired by any type of pollutant, whether that be nutrients or mercury or chloride or any other number of pollutants. And so here in Vermont and, and across the nation, uh, the state will collect data, analyze it, decide if it's meeting a water quality standard for that pollutant. If it isn't meeting that standard, then the next step triggers the development of this total maximum daily load, which is sometimes known as a pollution diet for the lake. How do we get it to the place where it isn't polluted by these materials that are entering it? And are the problems from the nutrient runoff that we seem to have so many problems with, is it something that can be solved, cleaned up? What's, what's the solution? Yeah, it's a, it's a challenge, right? This is a, a very difficult challenge, but way, the way that we're looking at it is thousands of different ideas and projects and prioritizing projects that can be done on the land that will minimize stormwater runoff and therefore minimize the amount of phosphorus that's moving, again, attached to soil particles to enter the lake. There are things called the tactical basin plans that the state has developed in partnership with a number of organizations within the each of the watersheds, the land areas that are draining to Lake Champlain. And again, they've defined projects within each of those watersheds that should, if implemented, help to minimize the amount of erosion and the amount of phosphorus that's entering that tributary river or stream and then ultimately reaching Lake Champlain. So clearly one of the problems, um, since phosphorus is one of the main problems, there is this thing called legacy phosphorus. It's been coming into the lake for decades, but only now is it really creating these problems and, and uh, what, what, do we, what do we do with that? What is the legacy phosphorus and um, what can we do? Yeah, so the legacy phosphorus, you described it well. It's the phosphorus that's come in over time and it's accumulating on the bottom of Lake Champlain. And what happens is if there are low oxygen conditions, which can happen at certain times of the year or even the day, uh, in the bottom, the phosphorus can actually be released from the sediments mm -hmm. and it can then be provided to for plant growth like cyanobacteria or other kinds of plants. And so what we're trying to do is address it from a, let's turn off the spigot of what's coming in from the watershed uh, so that we can minimize the amount that's there. But it is a challenge to know that it's gonna take many, many years before um, the legacy phosphorus is, is there. Uh, in smaller lakes, there's options to use something called alum where you can kind of trap that phosphorus in the, in the sediments. But in Lake Champlain, it's just, too costly to do something like that. So, so really, the legacy phosphorus is something we need to know that's there. But it's a challenge that's it's probably uh, bigger than what we can deal with in in a short time window. Right, and therefore, yes. that's why we're trying to deal with what's coming in across the landscape and minimizing that. Right, that base is going to be there no matter what. Are there processes that remove phosphorus from our waterways before they get to Lake Champlain? Uh, before they get to Lake Champlain. So that is what we can do on the land. So can we, if as individuals, something like a rain garden or a rain barrel or something that is allowing the stormwater to go into the ground and then let the ground do that uh, adsorption, sticking mm -hmm. phosphorus to the soil particles and let it hold that phosphorus versus letting the, the stormwater just sort of flow freely without having had a chance to infiltrate into the ground for some of that treatment. Okay. And, and Chris, one of the goals of Lake Champlain Sea Grant is, is outreach, uh, of course, and I want to ask you about that. Uh, but first, let's watch another video um, from the Lake Champlain Basin program about how one person can make a difference when it comes to the health of the lake. You can improve the health of Lake Champlain. The state of Vermont has a detailed plan for reducing phosphorus pollution, but it will take efforts by everyone. Your actions and support, even if you don't live near the lake, are important. You can also get involved with the Watershed Organization or Local Planning or Conservation Commission. Over the long term, the actions we take each day, however small, can collectively have a huge impact in improving the health of Lake Champlain. Champlain is important, but also public health. Why are algae blooms, just a reminder, why are they a, th a, th a threat to public health? Yeah, good question. So these blooms can be associated with toxins, which can be 
uh, their neurotoxins and liver toxins and uh, skin irritants, both for us and our pets, most likely our dogs who like to go swimming. So that is a concern where people, we just don't know the toxins come and go and we don't know when they are there yet. Yet we aren't able to predict that. So the, the best message that we have to share with people is before you get in a lake or a, a pond is to scan the water, look for those pea green soupy areas if you see that, you shouldn't go in and you shouldn't allow your pets to go in just to keep yourself safe because you don't know if the toxins are present. Okay. And just quickly, just a, a minute left. What, what can one person do? So many things. Uh, everything from composting to washing your car on the lawn to planting a tree to... Um, what else can you do? You can, I'm running out of ideas. Well, you know, why, why don't you tell us where people can go um, to do some of these things? I think there's contact information for the Lake Champlain Sea Grant Program. Um, yeah. Let's make sure people, people go there. That's a place they can figure this out. Yeah, so www.uvm.edu slash Sea Grant is our website, and there's lots of information there. Yeah, there are a lot, a lot of videos there. There um, are these things that individuals um, can do, the whole rain barrel thing. There's, there's a lot because it's, it's not, it's municipal runoff. It's, um, as well as, you know, there, there's, there's farming, but there's so much more that we can do as individuals. It's not just the farms either. I think that a lot of people are sensitive about that in Vermont. Absolutely, absolutely, right. As individuals and business, small businesses, um, mm. whether it's picking up after your dog or installing permeable pavers, as you say, it's, it is every single one of us. The more we can do individually, they add up. And that is where we get to have a success, uh, you know, if, as an individual landowner, if I can stop stormwater runoff from going off my land entirely, I think there's a win. Bingo. Well, Chris Stepanak, thank you so much for joining us today and, and helping us understand how we can contribute to clean water quality. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Mm -hmm.